The human sundial is a sundial where a person is the object that casts a shadow, called a gnomon. The person must stand in a different placement on the sundial depending on what month it is. This type of sundial with a movable gnomon is called an analematic sundial. In this video, we'll show how to make a human sundial using the calculator and instructions found on solarschoolhouse.org slash sundial. To make your own human sundial, you'll need to draw a coordinate system with a north-south line pointing to true north and a perpendicular east-west line. On this coordinate plane, you'll draw an ellipse, and on this ellipse, you'll draw hour labels. On the north-south line, you'll draw month markers. Once the sundial is drawn, standing on the month marker and raising your arms straight to the sky, the shadow cast will indicate the time. As you draw your human sundial, it is important that you minimize error so that your sundial is more accurate. We'll walk you through the steps needed to draw your sundial accurately. For a classroom project, we recommend that students work in groups of three to four and draw their sundials on the school's blacktop or square. The ideal location is paved, level, and gets sunlight throughout the day. We recommend that you construct your sundial four to six meters wide. Measure your site location so that you can input the width into our online site plan calculator. We use metric units because it is much simpler to measure and map the sundial, though using English units will provide an exercise in reading and mapping fractions should you wish to reinforce this skill in your students. On solarschoolhouse.org slash sundial, print out instructions for building a sundial as well as site-specific plans by filling out the online calculator. You'll be asked how wide the sundial will be, ideally about 5 meters or 500 centimeters. For our location, we decided to make our sundial 600 centimeters wide. Input your zip code, or if you know the latitude and longitude of your site, input those. Select your time zone. We made our sundial during summer times in the spring, so we check the box for summer times on the sundial. To later add winter times to the same sundial, we subtracted one hour for each label and wrote those in another color. Check the box to include x, y coordinates. Name your location. Check the box to include dimensions and instructions, then hit go. The results will show on the same page. To save the PDF, click on the upper right corner and choose Download to save to your computer. Finding True North is arguably the most important step. So what is True North, and why does it matter for the human sundial? A compass points to magnetic force which comes to a point at the Earth's magnetic poles, but these magnetic poles slowly change position over time. The geographic North Pole, however, remains in the same place. The human sundial requires being aligned to this geographic or true north point. To calculate how far the magnetic north pole is from the true north pole at your location, you will find an angle called magnetic declination. It is important that you draw your sundial facing true north because for each degree that your north-south line is off, your sundial will read about 5 minutes fast or slow. There are multiple options for finding true north. We recommend using the sun as well as a compass or compass app so that you can check your work. Using the sun is much more accurate as it can be difficult to read the numbers on a compass or keep it level. Each option has several steps. To find true north using the sun, you will trace a shadow cast by an object perpendicular to Earth's surface at exactly the middle of the day. This time of day is called solar noon. Calculating solar noon can be tricky, but it is a good challenge to have your students try. To calculate solar noon, first look up sunrise and sunset times at your location and date. Then find the day length by counting the number of hours between sunrise and sunset. Next, divide the day length in half and add that number to the sunrise time. At our location, on the date we made our sundial, the sunrise time was 6.08 a.m. and the sunset time was 8.06 p.m. We found that our solar noon was at 1.07 p.m. 
Hint, using 24-hour time can help calculate solar noon. To cast a shadow at exactly solar noon, you will need to tie a string around a rock or other weight and tie the other end of the string on a broom handle or board supported by two objects of the same height, such as chairs or boxes. This setup allows the shadow to be at a 90 degree angle perpendicular to the Earth's surface. At exactly solar noon for your location, trace the shadow with chalk. The end of the shadow closest to the weight points toward true south and the other end points toward true north. To find true north using a compass, you will need to look up the magnetic declination for your location and then adjust your compass. Look up your magnetic declination on the National Geophysical Data Center website. Click on the magnetic calculators on the left-hand bar. Type the address where you will draw the sundial into the Lookup Latitude Longitude box. Click Get Add Lat Long, then Calculate. A pop-up will appear with your declination. Double-check the map to make sure you have the right location. If not, go back to the lookup lat long and be sure you've added enough information such as your zip code. For our location in Sebastopol on this date, the declination was 13 degrees 34 feet east. This means that a compass at our location will point to the right of true north. So to draw a north-south line pointing to true north, we need to draw a line at about 13 degrees east. Now rotate your compass so that the needle points to the number of degrees of magnetic declination shown for your location. The zero will then point to true north. For our location, the magnetic declination was 13 degrees east, so true north was located by rotating the compass until the needle pointed to 13 degrees to the right of north. If we were constructing a sundial in Boston and had a magnetic declination of 15 degrees west, then we'd locate true north by rotating our compass until the needle pointed to 15 degrees to the left of north. This would be 345 degrees. You can place your compass over the line you drew at solar noon to compare your magnetic declination calculations. If the two are not the same, use the line you drew at solar noon. The third option we present for finding true north is to download a compass app for your mobile device. Note whether your app uses GPS or magnetics. If it uses GPS, then the north on your app will be true north. However, if the Compass app uses magnetics, you will need to use the same declination you would for a handhold compass to find true north. Now that you have found true north, you are ready to draw your north-south line, which is the y-axis of your coordinate plane. You'll find the dimensions of your line on your site-specific plans on Step 2, Page 1. Use a taut string to create a straight line over the line drawn at solar noon. You can use the string that you will use later for the ellipse. Just don't tie the string in a loop until you get to that step. Have two people hold the string and have the third person measure the length of the string using a tape measure. The tape measure may not be as long as the sundial. In this case, mark a center point and measure from the center to the top then the center to the bottom, marking the top and bottom and center points with the chalk. Hold the compass next to the string while drawing these points to check that they are accurately facing true north. The third person can then mark points along the string roughly every meter, again using the compass to check that each point is accurate. After that, the string can be released and a meter stick or other straight edge can be used to connect the points into a straight line. Now you are ready to draw the east-west line, which is the x-axis. To ensure that this line is perpendicular to the north-south line, we will use bisection construction. Tie one end of the string to a piece of chalk. Have one person hold the string at the top of the sundial have another person hold the chalk tied to the string. 
adjust the length of the string so that it is slightly longer than half of the north-south line and tie the string to a broom handle or marker to keep the distance. Then, holding the string taunt, draw an arc to the left and an arc to the right of the north-south line. Have the person holding the broom move to the bottom point of the sundial and again draw two arcs. These will intersect with the other arcs you drew. Untie the chalk and broom from the string so that you can use the string to make a straight line crossing the center point and the two points you created from the intersecting arcs. Use a tape measure to mark the end points of your east-west line. These dimensions are on your site-specific plans. Draw a few more points along the string so that you can use a straight edge to draw a straight and accurate line. Now you are ready to draw the ellipse. The length of twine needed to draw your ellipse will be on your site plan, Step 3, Page 2. We recommend measuring this out ahead of time. You will need to cut the string about 20 centimeters longer than the dimensions to allow room for the knot. Fold the twine in half. From the folded end, measure one half the distance of the specified loop. Tie the ends together in a knot at exactly this point. Measure and mark the two points indicated on your plans, Step 3, Page 2, along the east-west line. These are the focus points, or foci, of the ellipse. Two people then stand with broomsticks or markers held firmly on these points with the string looped around. The third person places a piece of chalk inside the loop of string and keeping the string taut gives, uses it as a guide to draw the ellipse. Each person holding a broom will have to step over the twine as the ellipse is drawn around their feet. Beware that the string may dig into the chalk, so you may want to wrap a piece of tape around the chalk before drawing the ellipse. Next, you will draw the hour labels on the ellipse. The position of each hour label is measured from either the west, north, or east cardinal points, and the distances are on your site-specific plans. Step 4b at page 4 if you printed the XY coordinates. Otherwise, it's just step 4, page 3. Use a tape measure to mark these on the outer side of the ellipse. To add winter daylight savings times to our sundial, we subtracted one hour from each label and wrote these in another color. For example, we used blue on the inner side of the ellipse. Later on, when we map the month markers, we'll use blue for the winter months to help remind folks which hour scale to read. The month markers, also called the date scale, will be along the north-south line. The tick marks are measured from the x-axis or the east-west line, as outlined on step 5 of your site-specific plans. Look at step 6 to see where to draw the month names. The east-west width of your date scale should be quite narrow, and we would recommend about 50 centimeters, uh, about 25 centimeters on each side of the north-south line. Now your sundial is ready for use. Add any fun chalk decorations you want and erase unwanted chalk marks with a wet rag. To use the sundial, stand on the date scale according to what day it is. For example, if it is a day in late March, stand near the dividing line between March and April. Or for a day in the beginning of October, stand closer to the dividing line between September and October. Your shadow will point towards the hour markers on the ellipse, much like a clock hand points to the hours on a clock. You can extend your shadow by reaching your arm straight up to the sky. Many people create permanent human sundials by painting over the chalk or getting creative with stones, mosaic, or other materials to mark the sundial. One well-known sundial sculpture is the Sundial Bridge in Redding, California. This sundial differs from yours as the bridge is the gnomon rather than a human. Have fun with your sundial and get creative while telling time. To learn more about analomatic sundials or get started on your own human sundial plans, visit 
solarschoolhouse.org slash sundial.